In this lesson, we're going to be writing terms of recursively defined sequences, writing recursive rules for sequences, translating between recursive rules and explicit rules, and writing recursive rules for special sequences. So far in this book, you've defined arithmetic and geometric sequences explicitly. An explicit rule gives a sub n as a function of the term's position number n in the sequence. For example, an explicit rule for the arithmetic sequence 3, 5, 7, 9, and so on is a sub n equals 3 plus 2 times quantity n minus n, or a sub n equals 2n plus 1 in this case. Now you will define arithmetic and geometric sequences recursively. A recursive rule gives the beginning term or terms of a sequence and a recursive equation that tells how a sub n is related to one or more preceding terms. So down here, for an arithmetic sequence, we have a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus d. a sub n minus 1 is just the term that comes before a sub n, okay? And then remember, d is that common difference. For geometric sequences, we have a sub n equals r times a sub n minus 1. Once again, a sub n minus 1 is the term that comes before, and r is our common ratio, the number that is repeatedly multiplying. For example one, we're going to write the first six terms of each sequence, then graph each sequence. Okay, well, I know that the first term here for part A, A sub 1, is going to be 2. So that's my first term. And then if you notice, A sub n equals A sub n minus 1 plus 3. So all I need to do to find my current term is just take the previous term and add 3. So if I add 3 to 2, I'm going to get 5. Then if I add 3 again, I'm going to get 8. Then 11. Then 14. And 17. Okay. So I've written my first six terms of this sequence, okay? And now if you remember, when I'm graphing a sequence, I want to graph the value of the term relative to its position number. So I can actually make a table here. So here is n, the position number of the term, and then a sub n. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then if I have my values that I just wrote up here, two, 5, 8, 11, 14, and 17. Okay, so now I'm just going to plot these points. And notice that this is a linear relationship, right? Because this is an arithmetic sequence. Arithmetic sequences are linear. But just notice that we could draw a line right through this. So this is a linear relationship. So now for the second part, part B, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I have a sub 1 equals 1, so that's my first term. And then a sub n equals 3 times the previous term, a sub n minus 1. So my first term, I'll draw a little line there. So I have 1. And then to get to my next term, I just multiply my previous term by 3. So my second term, I'll just multiply 1 by 3. So I get 3. And then if I multiply 3 by 3, I get 9, then 27, then 81, then 243. And now I have my first six terms. So once again, to graph this, I can make a table of values with n, the position number of my term, and then a sub n, the value of my term. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, my first six positions, and then 1, 3, 9, 27, 81, and 243. So now I'll just plot these ordered pairs. So 1, 1 is going to be somewhere like that. It's not going to be exact. 2, 3 is going to be very low as well. 3, 9, super low as well. 427, maybe something like that, 5, 81, that'll be somewhere right around here, and then 6, 243, that'll be right around here, okay? So notice that this is starting to look like an exponential curve, and now this might not be the most accurate um, graph of all time, but notice that it does seem to be exponentially growing here. And that makes sense, because it's a geometric sequence right here. This is the form of our geometric sequence, and it's just written recursively. Anyway, we've successfully written our first six terms of each sequence, and then graphed them, and now we're done. 
For this example, I'm going to write a recursive rule for each sequence. So for part A, I have negative 30, negative 18, negative 6, 6, and 18. And if you notice, I'm adding 12 each time, right? So plus 12, plus 12, plus 12, and plus 12, okay? So if you notice, I'm adding something each time, the same thing each time. So this is going to be an arithmetic sequence, okay? And there's multiple ways we can do this, okay? But we need to figure out our common difference, which we actually already have. It's going to be positive 12 because I'm adding 12 each time. Okay, and then also I need to figure out the value of my first term. Okay, well that's going to be negative 30. So a sub 1 equals negative 30. And to get to the next term, all I'm doing is adding the previous term to 12. So just 12 plus the previous term, or the previous term plus 12. So that's going to look like this. a sub n equals my previous term, which is a sub n minus 1, and then plus that common difference, 12. Okay, our general form of this would be a sub n equals a sub n minus 1, plus d, but you can kind of just figure it out without using this formula. Anyway, we have successfully written our recursive rule for part a. Now we're going to go over to part b. Okay? And in part b, I have 500, 100, 20, 4, and 0 0.8. And if you can see, what I'm doing each time is dividing by 5. Another way to say dividing by 5, in this case, is multiplying by 1 fifth. So the common ratio, the way I get from one of my terms to the next one, is going to be one fifth. That's what I multiply. Okay, so 500 times one fifth is 100, 100 times one fifth is 20, and so on. So I know that my r value is going to equal one fifth. Okay, and then I also need my first term, and a sub one is going to be 500 here. So a sub one equals 500. Okay, and remember to get a sub n, all I need to do is just multiply my previous term, which is a sub n minus 1, by my common ratio, r, which is 1 fifth. Okay, so that's it. a sub n equals 1 fifth a sub n minus 1, and my first value is 500. Once again, I could have started with the general form, which is a sub n equals r times a sub n minus 1. But if you can figure it out without using this formula, that works too. Anyway, we've successfully written our recursive rules, and now we're done. In example three, we're going to write an explicit rule for each recursive rule. For part A, I have a sub 1 equals 25. My first term is 25. And then a sub n equals a sub n minus 1, all minus 10. Okay? It's helpful to just write out a couple of these terms if you can figure it out easily. Uh, you don't have to, but it's just what I would recommend. So we have 25, and then the next term would just be 25 minus 10. So it's going to be 15, and then 5, and then negative 5 and so on. The next thing to notice is that this is going to be a linear relationship, which means it's an arithmetic sequence. Okay? And if you remember, the way that we write our explicit rules for arithmetic sequences, there's two ways actually that, I, that I've gone over. One is a sub n equals our first term, a sub 1, plus n minus 1 times d. Okay? Or the other way that I recommend is doing a sub n equals that fake term a sub 0, which is the term that would come before this term. And then that's just plus n times d. I prefer this method, but you can use either. The math's going to work out the same. Anyway, um, using this method, I would need to figure out what that ghost term a sub 0 is. Okay? So I'd have to figure out the term that would come before 25. And in that case, it would be 35. Because all I have to do, if I'm going this way, I'm just adding 10 each time. So this would be 35. I'll put that in a circle right here. Anyway, so that would be my a sub 0 term. So I'm going to plug that in. So a sub n equals 35 plus, well, if you look, my common difference is just whatever number I repeatedly subtract here. Okay, so I'm subtracting 10 each time. So my common difference is going to be negative 10. So it's going to be n times negative 10. And if I just simplify this and rewrite it, my explicit rule becomes a sub n equals negative 10n plus 35. All right. Now, you could try doing this the other way using uh, this method as well, and I guarantee you'll get the same thing if you did everything right. Anyway, now we're done with part A. Let's go to part B. So I'm going to zoom in here. I have a sub 1 equals 19.6, and I have a sub n equals negative 0.5a n sub 1. Okay? So basically, I'm just multiplying the previous term by negative 0.5. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to write out a couple of my terms here. Well, first I have 19.6. And if I multiply this by negative 1 half, or negative 0 0.5, I would get negative 9.8. If I multiply this by negative 1 half again, I'd get positive 4.9. 
and so on. So if you notice, this is going to be a geometric sequence, okay? Because I'm repeatedly multiplying by something, okay? And that thing that I'm multiplying by is going to be my common ratio. I can tell right away that's going to be negative 0 0.5. So r equals negative 0 0.5. And then I need to find my first term, which is a sub 1, which is 19.6. All right, so now I have everything that I need. So if you remember my formula for a geometric sequence, it's going to be a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. Okay. Another way to write this formula is a sub n equals a sub 1 over r times r to the power of n. Okay. Either will work. So anyway, I'm just going to plug my values in. I know my first value is 19.6, so that's a sub 1. I'll use this formula, but you can use either. And then I know that my r value is going to be negative 0 0.5. That's the number that I'm repeatedly multiplying. So when I plug these in, I'm going to get a sub n equals 19.6 over negative 0 0.5 times negative 0 0.5. Let me scroll over for a second. To the power of n. Okay? And all I have to do is simplify. And if I do 19.6 over negative 0.5, divided by negative 0.5 is the same as multiplying by negative 2. So I'm going to get negative 39.2 times negative 0.5 to the power of n. Okay. Now, if you do it th using this formula, your answer might look different, but it's going to be the same. Okay. So if I just leave it like this, and I do a sub n equals 19.6 times negative 0.5 to the n minus 1. Believe it or not, this formula is the exact same thing as this formula, just written differently. Okay, So both will work. Anyway, I've successfully written my explicit rules given the recursive formula, and now we're done. For example 4, we're going to write a recursive rule for each explicit rule, which is the reverse of what we just did. Okay, So I'm going to zoom in on part A. So if you notice, this is going to be an arithmetic sequence because this is a linear expression. I have negative 2n plus 3. This is kind of like slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Anyway, for a recursive version of this, a sub n, that's just a sub n minus 1, the term before, and then plus our common difference here. Okay? Well, if you notice, our common difference is just going to be the slope of this line, Okay, the number that's being multiplied by our variable. So it's going to be negative 2 because each time that I increase the value of the term, I'm going to decrease my output value by negative 2. So this is going to be negative 2. Okay, So a sub n equals the previous term, a sub 1, and then minus 2. And then I also need to find the value of my first term. Well, a sub 1 here, that's when I plug in 1 for n. Well, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 3 is positive 1. So a sub 1 equals 1. Okay, So now I've written a recursive rule. Okay, I start with 1, and then to get to my next value, I just keep subtracting 2. So each value that I want to get to, I just subtract 2 from the previous one. So now we're done with part A. For part B, I have a sub n equals negative 3 times 2 to the n minus 1 power. Okay, well, I notice that this is a geometric sequence, right, because I have something being taken to the n minus 1 power. Anyway, once again, I'm going to do the same thing, and I want to figure out, this time, my common ratio, the thing that I keep multiplying by to get to my next term, and my first value as well. So let's find the first value in this one first. It doesn't matter which one you find first. Uh, but a sub 1, all you got to do is plug 1 in for n. So I have negative 3 times 2 to the power of 1 minus 1. Well, I'm going to do that out, actually. So that's negative 3 times 2 to the 1 minus 1. Well, 1 minus 1 is 0. So I have negative 3 times 2 to the power of 0, which is just 1. So this is negative 3 times 1, which is just negative 3. So that's my a sub 1 value. So we're halfway there. Now I just got to find the common ratio, the number that is repeatedly being multiplied. Well, 2 is the base of this exponent. So that means that 2 is the number that's being multiplied. Okay? If you wrote out a couple of terms, you'd see that you're doubling your value each time. Okay, you start with negative 3, then you get to negative 6, then negative 12, and so on. So all I'm doing for a sub n is I'm just multiplying 2 times the previous term, a sub n minus 1. So I'm going to fix this box, because I'm going to put a box around both of them, because we need both. But anyway, now we're done with part B. Writing recursive rules for special sequences. You can write recursive rules for sequences that are neither arithmetic nor geometric. One way is to look for patterns in the sum of consecutive terms. 
So for example five, we're going to use the sequence shown below to A, write a recursive rule for the sequence, and B, write the next three terms for the sequence. Okay? Well, if you notice over on the right, this sequence is called the Fibonacci sequence that occurs all throughout nature. Uh, it's very cool. Anyway, let's see what's going on here. I'm going to zoom in. So I have one, then one, then two, then three, then five, then eight. Okay? And up here, it says to look for patterns in the sums of consecutive terms. That's just one thing you can do. There's all sorts of uh, recursive rules that aren't arithmetic or geometric. But let's just try that. Well, if I notice, I see one, one, and then two. Well, one plus one is two, okay. Well, one plus two is three, all right? So two plus three is five, and three plus five is eight. So that little pattern here works. Just my term is just equal to the sum of the previous two terms, okay? So the way that we would write that down here is a sub n is just equal to a sub n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2, okay? My value of the current term is just equal to the previous term plus two terms ago, okay? Well, let's see if that works. So 3 equals 2 plus 1. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, that's one thing I need. I also need my initial value, but normally I would only need one initial value, but since I have a sub n minus 1 and a sub n minus 2, I actually need two initial values. So my first value, a sub 1, well, that equals 1 here. My second value, a sub 2, that also equals 1, okay? So this is the recursive rule for the sequence, okay? So we're done with part A. For part B, I just have to write the next three terms of the sequence. I'm just going to rewrite this to make it a little bigger. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, and 8, okay? Well, all i got to do is just add the previous two terms. So to get to this next term, 5 plus 8 is 13. I'm going to move this, actually, down here so I have more space. So anyway, 5 plus 8 is 13. Then 8 plus 13, well, that gives me 21. And then 13 plus 21, that gives me 34. So these are the next three terms in this Fibonacci sequence. And now we're done.